Welcome to Being There, Slow Art at the Modern. Today we will take a look at Anselm Kiefer's D. Ashenbloom, or Ash Flower, a colossal painting on which the artist worked for nearly 15 years, from 1983 through 1997. It is one of five Kiefer pieces in the Modern's permanent collection. Anselm Kiefer was born in the Black Forest area of Germany on March 8, 1945, just two months before VE Day and the end of World War II. He grew up among the debris of saturation bombing and states, I was born in ruins. Ruins for me are the beginning. With the debris, you can construct new ideas. They are the symbols of a beginning, the starting point for something new. Kiefer abandoned his law studies to pursue art, first in Freiburg, and he ended up at the Kunstakademie in Dusseldorf, where he met his mentor, the conceptual artist, Joseph Boys. Boys encouraged Kiefer's early use of symbolic photographic images to deal ironically with 20th century German history. Kiefer has remarked that in grammar school, students were taught about Alexander the Great, but not about the Third Reich or the Holocaust. And he believed it was necessary for Germans to confront the Nazi past in order to move forward. In 1969, at the age of 24, Kiefer produced a performance piece in which he was photographed at various locations in Germany and Europe, giving the Nazi salute, a punishable crime in Germany since 1945. While German artists of his era shied away from their country's recent history, Kiefer confronted it directly. He explains, back when I did the action with the hand, I was saying, you think because we have a new constitution, it's all fine now? For me, it was just being covered up. But that does not mean it has gone. It's always there, but sometimes it is more hidden. Kiefer is fond of saying, only by going into the past can you go into the future. And Kiefer clearly confronts the Nazi past in Ashenbloom. He uses the ceremonial mosaic hall in the Third Reich chancel rebuilding as the underlying image and as a larger symbol. Designed by one of Hitler's favorite architects, Albert Speer, the neoclassical style of the mosaic hall connotes authority, discipline, order, and permanence. The room was designed to display Hitler in his role as an absolute dictator. And for Kiefer, the hall symbolizes the crimes and decadence of the Nazi era, as well as of the transformation that might occur when viewers face and claim the history of that past. Kiefer's goal here seems to be to create a specifically German art that will examine and perhaps exercise specifically German ills, particularly those of the Nazi era and its aftermath. When we look at Ashenbloom, we are struck first by its size. The piece is approximately 12 feet by 25 feet, and its sheer physical presence prevents the painting from being experienced merely as an image. It is more of an artifact that actively confronts and even implicates the viewer. Like Pollock, Kiefer transforms a painting from a picture to be contemplated into a fact that splashes into the world. However, everything about a Pollock painting points to one moment in time. But in Ashenbloom, there is no sense of a single moment. The painting seems to span epochs. Kiefer uses a variety of materials in Ashenbloom. The painting consists of oil, emulsion, acrylic paint, clay, ash, earth, and a dried sunflower, the ash flower. 
Kiefer prepares an emulsion of oil colors in a cellulose paste and applies the emulsion in thick layers. It is then left to dry for at least a year. This results in a chunky impasto that, consistent with many of Kiefer's works, is not only heavy, but also unstable. MoMA had to reinforce its walls to hang the Kiefer pieces, and when Kiefer's works are moved, bits and pieces sometimes fall off. Kiefer is fine with this, since he embraces the idea of change. In fact, he is keenly interested in alchemy. And in a recent Modern Art Museum of Fort Worth purchase, Aurora, 2015 to 17, Kiefer has used sediment of electrolysis, which means that Aurora will change over time. When asked if alchemy is a metaphor for what he does, Kiefer corrects, it is what I do. Alchemy is not to make gold. The real alchemist is not interested in material things, but in transubstantiation, in transforming the spirit. We notice that the ash and dirt give the surface of ash and bloom a dull grayish color that suggests not only seriousness and death, but perhaps damage caused by bombs and fire as well. In fact, the chancellery building suffered severe damage during the Battle of Berlin and was demolished after the war by the Soviet occupation forces. We also notice that the picture plane is at once flat and deep, frontal and yet rapidly receding. Kiefer's works have often been compared to stage sets. And of course, we notice the upside down sunflower. Sunflowers are recurring symbols in Kiefer's works, but they are not Van Gogh's sunflowers. Kiefer is not interested in any Van Gogh-like warmth. His ash flower is dead and hanging upside down. And for Kiefer, it is a symbol of both death and rebirth. To better understand how Kiefer is using the sunflower in Ashen Bloom, here is what he has to say about his first communion. I was interested in transcendence from a very early age. I was interested in what was over there, what was behind life. So when I had my first communion, I was very disappointed. I had expected something amazing and surprising and spiritual. Instead, all I got was a bicycle. That wasn't what I was after at all. Sunflowers turn toward the sun their energy source. And many have noted a connection with Christians following God and other religions following their spiritual guide or divine being. Sunflowers are seen as symbols of loyalty to something brighter or bigger than themselves. As we have already seen, the ceremonial hall in the Third Reich Chancellery Building was designed to display Hitler as a larger-than-life leader people could look up to and follow, much like the sunflower and the sun. However, Kiefer explains, each building has a history created by its own fiction and need to demonstrate its philosophy of existence. That fiction is part of the debris of history. And my images connect with that debris. Kiefer's sunflower stands for the German national shame and spills its seeds onto the ground. Amidst the architectural ruin which Kiefer uses to symbolize human vanity, there is the possibility of rebirth. Because of Kiefer's interest in alchemy, it's what I do, and his belief that time is cyclical rather than linear, it is possible to read Ashenbloom as Kiefer's attempt to have viewers, and especially German viewers, face and claim 
the history of the Nazi era in order to move forward. Only by going into the past can you go into the future. In much of his work, Kiefer is exploring how to be a German artist after Hitler. And this is certainly the case with Ashen Bloom. Kiefer is one of the first artists in post-war Germany to look into Nazi history by means of his art. His works are powerful to look at, but disturbing to think about. As Kiefer has said, art is difficult. It's not entertainment. Thank you for spending some time getting to know Ashenblum a bit better, and we look forward to seeing you in the museum soon.